Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a cantilever slab. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design a cantilever slab projecting 1.2 meter from the support. The length is given as 1.2 meter. We can convert that into millimeter. That will be 1200 millimeter. Use grade 20 concrete and FE 415. High yield strength deformed steel. FCK is 20 and FOE is 415. Assume a live load of 2.7 kN per meter square and weight of finishing on the top is 800 Nm per meter square. We can convert that into kN per meter square. 800 by 1000. It will be 0.8. The first step is to find the effective depth of the slab. In IS 456 code book, we have to take the page number 37. The ratios of span to effective depth are given. The span given in the question is 1200 and it is a cantilever slab. For cantilever, the ratio is 7. For the effective depth, we will get this. We can round this to 180 millimeter. In the previous video, we increased this ratio little bit high. But for the cantilever slabs, we don't have to increase that. We need to find the overall depth capital D. That will be the effective depth plus half diameter of the main reinforcement. I am going to keep the main reinforcement as 8 millimeter. So 8 by 2 plus the clear cover. I am going to keep the clear cover as 16 millimeter. So the overall depth will be 200 millimeter. In the fixed end, the overall depth D will be 200 and we can assume that in the free end, it will be gradually changed to 100 millimeter. Now we are going to find the effective span. As per the code book, the effective length of a cantilever shall be taken as its length to the face of the support plus half the effective depth. So it will be clear span plus effective depth upon 2. The effective depth is 190 millimeter. When we convert that into meter, it will be 0.18. In this way, for the effective span, we will get 1.29 meter. Now we are going to find the factored load. First, we need to find the dead load. That will be the overall depth D into the unit weight of the concrete 25 kN per meter cube. We know that the overall depth D changes from 200 millimeter to 100 millimeter so for d we have to take the average of these two we need to convert both of them into meter for the dead load we will get 3.75 the finish and live load are given in the question when we add these three we will get the total load when we multiply the total load with 1.5 we will get the factored load. Now we can find the factored load for 1 meter length. For that we have to multiply this with 1 meter. In this way we will get 10.875 kN per meter. Now we are going to find the ultimate movement and shear force. We know that when a cantilever beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load for the full span, the maximum movement occurs in the support A and the formula to find that is WU into L into L upon 2. So it will be WU L square upon 2. Also the maximum shear force occurs in the support A and the formula is WU into L. WU just before we have calculated L is the effective span 1.29 meter. For the movement, we will get 9.05 and for the shear, we will get 14.03. Now, we have to apply the check for the maximum depth. We need to use this formula. Let us see how to get this formula. From the page number 96, we can find this formula. Here, instead of xv max upon d, we have to apply 0.48. Doing so, we can derive this formula. 
in the formula we have to apply unit breadth that is 1 meter that will be 1000 millimeter we can convert the movement in newton millimeter just to, we have to multiply with the 10 power 6 after the calculation we will get 57.26 but the designed depth is more than that so the effective depth d is enough the section is under reinforced now we are going to design the reinforcement in the slab from the page number 96 we can copy this formula in the formula let us apply all of the values after applying we will get this equation using the calculator we can solve the equation for AST we will get 141.57 mm square now we have to check whether this area is enough from the code book page number 48 we can see that the mild steel reinforcement in either direction in slabs shall not be less than 0.15% of the total cross-sectional area however this value can be reduced to 0.12% when high strength deformed bars are used we are using FE415 bars in this case we have to select 0.12% for 0.12% of BD, we will get 240 mm square. This area is bigger than the calculated area. In this case, we have to proceed with this area. Using this formula, we can find the spacing. In the beginning, we have decided that we would use 8 mm diameter bars. So, small AST will be 5 into 8 square upon 4. In this way, we will get 209.43. We can round that to 200 millimeter. Now we can find the area provided 1000 upon the spacing 200 into AST. We will get 251.31 millimeter square. Now let us apply the check for cracking. There are three conditions. First, we have to check for minimum area. In the previous step, we have already done that. Then we have to check the diameter of the bar. In this code book, we need to check page number 48. The diameter of the reinforcing bars shall not exceed one eighth of the total thickness of the slab. The total thickness of the slab is the overall depth D. 200 upon 8, it will be 25. Our rebar size is 8. It is less than 25, so it will be safe. Now let us see the third condition. In this code book, we have to open page number 46. The horizontal distance between parallel main reinforcement bars shall not be more than three times the effective depth of slab or 300 millimeter, whichever is smaller. So the spacing of steel should be less than 3D or 300 millimeter, whichever is smaller. Our effective depth is 190. 3 into 190, it will be 540. So 300 is less than 540. So we have to use this for comparison. Our spacing is 200 millimeter. That is less than 300. So it is safe. Now let us design the distribution reinforcement. For that we have to take the minimum area. In the previous step we have calculated that 240 millimeter square. We can provide 8 millimeter diameter bars. Using this formula, we can find the spacing. Let us round that to 200 mm. According to this class, the spacing of the steel should be less than 5D or 450, whichever is less. 5D will be 900, so 450 is less. Our spacing is less than 450, so it is safe. Now let us design the anchorage length. From the page number 42, we can copy this formula. In the case of high deformed bars, for sigma s, we can keep 0.87 fy. Now we have to take the page number 43. For M20, the design bond stress is 1.2. But for deformed bars, it can be increased by 60%. So tau bd will be 1.2 into 1.6. Fy is 415. For the anchorage length, we will get 376 mm. Now we are going to apply the check for the shear stress. 
from the page number 72 we can copy this formula the shear stress we have already calculated 15 kilo newton 1 kilo is 1000 b we know 1000 and the effective depth is 190 for tau v we will get 0 0.08 then we need to find the percentage of steel for that we will get 0 0.14 now we need to open page number 73 our pt is 0.14 and the grade of concrete is m20 for equal or less than 0.15 tau c is 0.28 now we need to open page number 72 we need to find k according to the overall depth of the slab our overall depth is 200 for that k is 1.2 tau c into k we will get 0 0.34 tau v we already calculated 0 0.08 tau v is less than tau c k so it will be safe now we are going to check for the deflection from the code book we have to copy this formula in the formula we can apply all of the values we will get 135.58 pt just before we have calculated 0.14 this point is 0 and this point is 0 0.2. Let us give this point approximately as a 0 0.14. From that point, we have to draw a vertical line. Our FS is 135.58. 135 comes between the curves FS 120 and FS 145. You can see that both of these two curves are out of the reach. In this case, we can keep the maximum modification factor that is 2. We know that the span to effective depth ratio is 7. We need to multiply that basic value with k. For L, we have to apply the effective span. For the effective depth d, we will get 92.14. Our effective depth d is 190, which is bigger than this. In this case, the section is safe against deflection. Here you can see the cross section of the slab. This is the anchorage length we have calculated. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.